Magnificent makers, it's Prof Gene. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to very quickly create a design for a box that we can cut using a laser cutter. Now, this was created for my students to build a housing for their 3D sensing mason jar light project using CircuitPython, but the concepts here can apply to most settings where you'd want to fab up an enclosure. Now, we're going to use makercase.com to quickly create a file to use for cutting our box. Then we'll use Adobe Illustrator to add to these plans by adding additional holes for a sensor mason jar and USB cable, we'll add some text for engraving, and we'll be sure that our colors and lines are properly set for the laser cutter. Now we use a Trotec laser cutter at Boston College where I teach, but the settings should be similar for other laser cutters as well. Check with your kind shop professionals just to be sure. If this sounds good to you, then let's learn big. Now there are a lot of websites that you can use to create a box. My students used boxes.py, otherwise known as Festi, F-E-S-T-I, during one training session. I really like this very simple site, makercase.com. So if you go to this site, you'll first select the type of box that you want. I've asked my students to create a square box for their distance control or blue fruit controlled mason jar light. So click the basic box. This box is going to be six inches wide, six inches deep, and two inches high. And you see the dimensions change on screen as you enter the different values. Now on a Mac trackpad, you can also pinch and zoom to make the image larger or smaller. Next, select the material thickness if you need to. My students can leave this at one eighth inch, which is the standard for the Baltic birch wood that's most commonly used in our campus makerspace. Then on the left, there are some additional options. I'm going to click on closed box since I want my box to have a top. And then moving your cursor on the column on the left, make sure your cursor is in there, will allow you to scroll up. You can see different types of edge joints. Finger joints give a nice fit. They create a sturdy box when glued. So I'm going to select this. You can also adjust the finger size if you think that you might want more or fewer joints for a more sturdy build. And in this box, we're going to glue all of the sides together except for the top. You want the top to be able to be removed so you can put your electronics and cable inside. Now, unfortunately, the MakerCase site doesn't allow us to add additional holes, which we'll need for our mason jar, our sensor, and our USB cord. But fear not, we'll learn how to use Adobe Illustrator to add those holes so the laser cutter can cut those out as well. Now, once you've got your box designed the way you'd like it, click on Download Box Plans. There are a few more options in here. I don't need panel labels, and I don't want them etched by the laser cutter, so I'm going to click on Disabled under Panel Labels. Combined panels seem to bring them closer together. Maybe that will save you a bit of wood, but I'm going to keep mine separate. I'm not sure if that really matters for our cuts. And then I'm going to click on Download SVG. SVG is a popular standard for graphic images called Scalable Vector Format. Vector Format is what you're going to want for laser cut lines. You don't want raster, which will create little dots. And you'll be able to read this file type in via programs like Adobe Illustrator. It can also be read in by the Ruby software that's used by the Trotec laser cutters in our campus makerspace. If you're asked to allow downloads from makercase.com, click allow so your file can be saved and you can change the name. The default is box.svg. Just remember where you saved it. Now, Adobe Illustrator is on computers in the campus makerspace and in the digital lab. My students can ask the staff for help if they need it. You can also get a seven day trial of Adobe Illustrator online and you can rent it for $20 a month via a student price. Just search online for Adobe Illustrator college student price if that seems interesting. And there are also some open source alternatives that you can access online for free. Inkscape is probably the most popular, but I'm gonna show you how to use Illustrator here since that's a standard on campus. So with Illustrator launched, I'm gonna click on the new file button in the upper left hand corner. I'll create a new canvas, the size of the laser cutter bed for the Trotec laser cutters that we use on campus. In the upper right corner, I'm going to set the size to 32 inches wide by 20 inches high. If your measurement isn't set to inches, you can set that under this pull down menu. Then I'll click on the create button in the lower right and we see a blank canvas in Illustrator. Then I'm going to head up to the file menu and select open, find the file that I just saved using makercase.com. Mine was called box.svg. And when I click open, this is huge on screen and it's opened up in a separate tab. So I'm going to select everything in this image. I'll use the shortcut command A on the Mac. That's control A on Windows. Then I'll copy this command C on Mac, control C on Windows. Then head back to this first tab on the left. That's our 32 by 20 canvas. The blank canvas should show up. Then I'm going to paste in what I just copied. That's the box drawing using Command V on Mac, Control V on Windows. And I can click this image and drag it up to the upper left hand corner. Now, one thing that's super important is to make sure that the red lines, which tell the laser cutter to cut right through material, are made in full red color in the color scale known as RGB. So I have my image selected. 
Now it's tricky because if I click this outline square in the lower left hand corner, this is the stroke outline for any lines that you draw, it looks like it's red. But this isn't an RGB format and this is not the kind of red that the laser cutter needs. But we can change our format to RGB and change the color. And I always forget where the options are in Illustrator. I am not an Illustrator expert, but fortunately up on the Mac, if you go to the help menu, there's a search bar here. I'm just going to type in RGB and I can see under the file menu, there's document mode and convert to RGB. So I'm going to select that. And now my color box in the upper right is still showing another standard called CMYK. I don't want that, but if I double click on the stroke box in the lower left hand corner, this is already outlined in red. Again, it's not the right red that I need, but when I see the color picker here, I can see the RGB values and the values we want for pure red are R to 255. These values go from zero to 255 and G and B for green and blue should both be zero. Then I can click OK to close this box. And if I double click on the stroke box, I should see that it's back up as RGB with 255 00, just to double check. Nice. Now for this project, I also need a hole in the top panel for the mason jar. Now the top and bottom panels are identical, so either one's going to do. I've measured my mason jar with a caliper tool, and the particular mason jar that's in our labs is three and a half inches wide. So let's draw a circle using the ellipse tool. It's under the rectangle tool, fifth from the top in the leftmost side toolbar. And when you click right or two finger click on the Mac, under the rectangle tool, you'll see an additional menu of options. Select the ellipse tool. And if you hold down your shift key when you click and drag, this is going to form a perfect circle, which is what I want for my mason jar lid. Now you can draw this circle any size you want, really, because we're going to head over here to the right hand side. And in the properties tab under transform, I can enter a new width and height. So I'm going to set this to 3.5 inches for both width and height. That's perfect for the opening that I need for my mason jar. If you're not seeing inches show up here, you should be able to type in 3.5 space IN to get the inches in there. And if that still doesn't work, under the Illustrator menu, under Preferences, you'll find a Units pull-down menu, and in here you can set the units for General, Stroke, and Type. And now I can click on the selection tool in the top left, this arrow here, and click and drag my circle to position it right in the center of the panel I want to use for the top of my box. Illustrator gives me these little pink lines to indicate that I'm centered in the box, so I'll let go when I see these and all looks good. Now another thing I want to do is cut holes in two different side panels. One should be for the USB cord, which will go out the back of the box, and another will be right in the center of another panel, which will be the opening for the digital sensor's laser, so the laser can shoot out and detect if somebody's approaching your mason jar. Now I'm not sure how large the laser sensor is, and all of my sensors are at school, I'm creating this video at home, so I'm just going to head to the Adafruit site and look up the sensor specifications. The sensor we're using for this project is the VL53L1X. So I'm going to type this in the search box. Here it is. If I click this option, I can scroll down and take a look at the specs. I see it's 1 inch by 0 0.7 inch by 0 0.2 inches. So I'm going to make my hole just a smidge smaller than this. So I can tape my sensor to the inside of the box, but I still have a hole that should be plenty big enough for the laser to poke out and detect a reading. So now I'm going to select the rectangle tool in the toolbar. That's in the same spot where we selected the ellipsis tool. Just right click or two finger click on the ellipsis and you should be able to select rectangle tool from the pull down menu. I'll click and drag and draw a rectangle in approximate shape. But then in the upper right hand corner, I'm going to change that. And again, I think the width is 0 0.8 will be good if it was normally one inches. So I'll get a little bit of overlap on the inside so the sensor can stick to the back of my front panel. And I'll set the height to 0 0.5 inches. Then I'll click the selection arrow and position this in the middle of one of the box's side panel. They're all identical for my box. And I need another hole for the USB cord to slide through. This can also be a rectangle. So a shortcut for this is I'm just gonna click on the sensor rectangle that I just drew, copy this with a Command C, Control C on Windows, paste it with a Command V, Control V on Windows. I'll position this in just a bit, but first let me change the width and height. I've measured the USB cable, and remember here you want it to be a little bit bigger than your measurement, so that cable can definitely go through. I'm going to set my width to 0.5 inches and the height to 0.3 inches. That should be plenty of room, but do measure your cord to make sure that your equipment will fit through any hole that you're cutting. Then I'll move this rectangle to a lower corner of one of my side panels, not the same one that has the sensor hole because those should be on opposite sides of your box, and we're good. 
Now let's double check the red lines that we created just to make sure that they're the right color of red. So I'm going to Command A to select all, Control A on Windows, and hmm, I can already see that there's a problem. I'm not sure what I did wrong, but the red should be showing up in the stroke box on the left, and it's not. So I'm going to double click this, pull up the color picker, and I'm going to enter my red as 255, zeros for G and B. Click OK. And now the stroke box looks good, it's red. If I click on any individual item that I've drawn, well, I'm seeing this color box with CMYK format. I don't want that, so I'm gonna close it. But if I double click an item, double click the stroke box, I'll see 255, zero, and zero. That's the red that I want. I can try this on other parts of my drawing just to confirm, and the red is looking good. Now the next thing I need to do is to set the line width to the width of the red lines that the laser cutter wants so that it can cut straight through our material. So this width should be 0.01 millimeters. So I'm gonna select all with a Command A, Control A for Windows, and over here on the right, I see the stroke width is showing as 7.2 points, but I need to enter 0.01 mm for millimeters. Press Return or Tab after entering that. This changes things. The strokes are now super thin, but they're still there. Sometimes when I'm working, I like to set the stroke width to large so I can see everything, and then just before I save, I'll set the stroke width back down to 0.01 millimeters. And this looks like I didn't set the stroke width for the three shapes that I drew. So I'm going to select each of these individually and be sure to set the stroke to 0.01 mm. Make sure you add the mm in there. And now everything is looking good. And if you want, you can jazz up your box with some engraving. I'm going to put some text on one of the sides in the bottom of this box. So I'm going to select the Type tool. It looks like a T in the left-hand toolbar. And this will put a placeholder text wherever you click on screen. I'm going to enter Distance Reactive Light in here for my text. Then I'll click the Selection Arrow and click back on my text to make sure that it's selected. And then in the panel on the right, about halfway down, you see a character selection. This first pull down allows you to select a font. I'm going to select Arial Black. I think that that looks nice when engraved. And I'm going to set the point size pull down under here, typing in 36. Then I'll tab to accept this value. And it's starting to look good. Let's see. I'm going to put the text on two lines here by clicking in, deleting a space, and pressing return. And then I'm going to center my lines by clicking in the paragraph section on the right panel to center the text. And then with the selection tool arrow selected, I can drag my text to the middle of one of my side panels. Just don't put it on a panel that already has holes. This looks good. And now I'm going to duplicate my text by clicking on it and then pressing Command C to copy on Mac, Control C on Windows, then paste with Command V or Control V. And I'm going to change the text to read made by Prof G. And with the selection tool selected and this text centered, this is where I want it. But there's one more step you need to do when you work with fonts like this. The laser cutter won't engrave Illustrator text. We need to create an outline of this text. So I'm going to select my Made with Prop G text. Then in the lower right hand corner, I'm going to click this button that says Create Outlines. That outlines the text and that will create engraving so that you can engrave using the laser cutter. And this looks good. I'm I'm going to double check the fill box, so I'm going to click this box that's filled in just to the upper left of the stroke box, and I'm looking to make sure that the color here is pure black. That's what we need for engraving, so red cuts straight through with the laser cutter, but pure black will engrave. This says 000 for RGB. That's pure black. That's what I want. Nice. I'll repeat this step with my other text, clicking the text, selecting Create Outlines. This is looking good, it's all in black. And so now, save this file to your laptop and bring it to the makerspace. They've got USB drives in the makerspace, so you'll be able to use those to move a file from your laptop to the Trotex PC laser cutter software. But if you've got your own USB, you can also save it on that too. I'm going to select File, Save As, Save on Your Computer. I'm going to save this as an Illustrator file, which is fine for the Trotec Ruby software that we use just before printing. But you can also save this as an SVG if you'd like. I've already got a file with the name that I'm using right now. I'm going to replace it. You likely don't have to worry about that. But do remember where you save your file so you can find it. When you see Illustrator options up here, you can just click OK and accept the default. And now you're ready to head to the makerspace and work with the super kind staff there to cut your laser box. Make sure you thank them. And when you're done, you can assemble all sides on your box like this, but leave the top half off. Remember, we want to make sure that we can open and close the top half to get at the electronics. The staff can help you with wood glue. You need to leave it in the makerspace for about 24 hours while the wood glue cures. If you want to get super fancy, they have wood stains that you can use in there as well. 
well, but again, plan for another 24 hours so your stain can cure. But you'll be ready to bring this to class so that we can assemble our parts. And hopefully, you're feeling confident enough to create your own housings for future projects as well. If you make anything for children, you might want to use thicker wood, say one quarter instead of one eighth. Make sure you glue everything up really well. The makerspace also has acrylics of various thicknesses and transparencies. Those require a special acrylic glue for putting pieces together, but the makerspace has that and the team can coach you through it. But congratulations, you've got another making skill. Now go out there and make something awesome.